Hey everyone, welcome back to Eternal Brews. My name is Pocho, and today we're going to be looking at an old list and a new one. Uh, there's been some Mask of Torment decks going around the ranked ladder recently. Uh, I believe Top 8 was one who designed some, as well as Ilya K posted a list on the Reddit that uh, inspired me to go back and take a look at our old Greedthorn list, which is a 3 to 4 color control using Martial Ironthorn and Mask of Torment to get to like really, really big stuff and sort of play all that out and get a really, really big pile of stuff going. This has been something I've been wanting to revisit a lot more in uh, Dead Reckoning and just like the upcoming, like this current like set 3 just meta, uh, but one of the things that is kind of <laughs> true about any deck where I'm playing a lot of greed things is that I tend to play around with those decks until they get uh, far too greedy and they get really fun to play but they also get less reliable for the ladder. So I've been wanting to tune it back down to something that was much more competitive on ladder and actually get something that I could get to master with. So we've been playing this deck, uh, made it up to Diamond 1 so far, and we're going to be trying to make the rest of Master in uh, this recording session. And uh, we are basically looking at a brew where we are trying a little harder to stay competitive in the early game using the new Hailstorm, as well as increasing the number of early game threats and early game sort of fixers or problem solvers to make sure that we get to our late game which has a lot less in it. So it's not quite as greedy, it's specifically designed to play uh, just the really really high top end, which is to say 8 of the Huru, 1 touch of the Umbrin, and then the 20 cost Mask of Torment Tormentors. That should be more than enough to finish out any game against basically any type of control list, and so what we're trying to do here, and what I think we've succeeded in doing, is build a deck that is much more capable of using its power efficiently every turn. So that's the basic idea. We're just going to actually play control, we're going to be very very careful, and we're going to build our way to the point where we can actually get up to 12 and have like a really really good time. So let's look at the list that uh, we've put together here. I used uh, Ilya's list as a starter, but we eventually took a lot of cards out of that, changed around the power base, uh, did a lot of things to sort of improve the early game and also help out a little bit more in the late game against particular matchups. Uh, I actually really like this touch of the Umbran here in place of one Black Sky Harbinger for all of the large Praxis to Elysian mid-range lists that tend to show up. This is a card that can really turn the tide of that particular fight. And we're also running one Corrupt for the decks that are uh, a little bit uh, on the same vein, the ones that are running lots of Channel the Tempests, uh, such as Chalice decks, other Mask decks, basically anything that's trying to pull Channel the Tempest as a finisher, uh, we're going to outgreed it with Eight of the Huru, and we're also going to turn those Channel the Tempests away. And, you know, this also works on Slay, it works on Vanquish, it works on anything that's going to be aiming at Iron Thorn. so if we can stick an Iron Thorn down on the board, then that's the basic idea. Uh, so just little, little tiny things here as one of but let's talk about the main theme of the deck, which I, we've discussed before. But the basic idea here, of course, is to get to eight of the Huru. Stun each enemy unit, play two 4-4 four, four Owls with Flying, draw four cards, gain four armor. The ultimate stabilizer and also just a fantastic way to win a game if you have any amount of pressure at all. Uh, not only does it give you large evasive units that can actually win the game, it also stabilizes the board. It makes it so that you can't be burned out by any sort of final play, like, say, a Champion of Fury, an Obliterate, a Flash Fire, anything like that, Eight of the Huru will generally protect you from. And, uh, of course, it gives you four cards, so it means that you're winning uh, the game from here on out in top deck mode, because you just have more cards, you have better card selection, and all of that really means that if you can play this card, you will almost always seal the end game, especially if the rest of your cards have any amount of board impact whatsoever. So in order to ramp to that, we're operating on two strategies. The first is only two Martial Ironthorn, which is play an additional copy of a power every time that we play a power, and pay 15 to kill all enemy units. And the second is Mask of Torment, the four cost plus one maximum power whenever you gain health, plus one maximum power, and pay 20 to play your 8-8 ridiculous giant tormentor with all of the cool abilities in late game control. This card provides the finisher for the list. It is the most common method of providing lethal for the deck, and it also will, even when it doesn't provide lethal, eventually overwhelm your opponent with spitelings and make it so that they have to spend like a huge amount of effort to get rid of the Tormentor and get it out of the way. So 
yeah, this card is very, very solid in the late game, and it's also our primary ramp source. What we are doing is we are basically just gaining life and playing down units that provide health, such as Temple Scribe, Combray Healer, and Devoted Theurge. And with all of those, that'll gain us some extra health that allows us to basically get us to the point where we can cast a new Tomorrow, which will, of course, completely play out all the power of our deck so we never draw anything that bombs, and we have the ability to automatically ultimate Martial Ironthorn or play Eight of the Huru into another like set of cards. Basically all of that is just really, really solid, uh, but it also allows us to ramp up to things like Black Sky Harbinger, which will also increase that lifesteal and stabilize the board. Uh, everything here is aimed at stabilizing. We run four Hailstorms to make sure that we don't get overrun by aggro decks. We run four Harsh Rolls to make sure we don't get overrun by mid-range decks. If the deck is very, very large mid-range alongside of like uh, praxis -y stuff, we can get some late-game finishers for the board on in the form of Martial Ironthorn, Aid of the Huru, and Touch of the Umbrin, which can turn a board around and force our opponent into a very, very bad position. Uh, this deck does pretty well against most decks in the field. Uh, it is not amazing against certain rush decks, but for the most part it is very, very capable of actually dealing with most aggro. Uh, Control-wise, it seems to beat a pretty decent amount of the field just for its ability to get everything going. Where it's going to be unreliable is not in the overall nature of the deck, but in uh, specific counters such as Reign of Frogs or anything that has a lot of attachment destruction, seeing as Mask of Torment is something like a linchpin of the deck. If you see decks with a lot of banishes and a lot of decays, then you have to move your strategy around and basically work for some other ramp targets to get yourself up to eight of the Huru. Mask is probably the best option still, and there are ways to turn that around on your opponent. Uh, one of the things that we are actually running is that corrupt, specifically to allow us to steal banishes and turn them back on the decks that are running them. Um, but yeah, like the other thing that will also tend to give you losses is if you take hands that have two power or less, or you're forced into hand that have, hands that have two power or less, it can be difficult to stabilize and get all of the necessary influence. This deck deliberately does not go very deep on influence. We're not using leave a witness. We're not using anything that costs four or three influence. Everything is two or less. And most of the cards aren't even actually two. We need double justice for harsh rule and double primal for pretty much everything, which is where I would running Seats of Wisdom, Seat of Order, and trying to sort of make sure that blue is a pretty decent focus of the list. We also need Double Justice for Harsh Roll, and this Touch of the Umbrin, generally we're going to have whatever influence we need for Touch of the Umbrin by 8, so that's not one we're going to be too worried about. I would not try to put together Double Shadow until you have all of your other influence completed. But uh, Find the Way helps with that a lot. Seek Power, of course, will stabilize quite well. And Strategize will give you the ability to pick and choose certain cards, as well as to put particular cards like Eight of the Huru down on the bottom when you don't need them. Uh, I would really recommend that you always strategize Eight of the Huru in the very early turns, unless you have some particular reason to uh, expect that you're going into a long control game and you're going to need every Eight of the Huru you, you can get. Basically, as long as you can get yourself up to high enough power, this deck will eventually win the game, and because we have so many different ways of drawing through the deck and basically bombing out the deck and buying more time, we don't need to play Eight of the Huru and just rely on it to be in our hand. So that's the, the basic idea. All right, so we're going to play some games with this. We're going to see if we can get Master, and uh, I will be just recording those. So I will show you guys how this deck works, and we're going to have a little fun. See you in just a second. All right, we are up against Joy Boy, uh, Crest of Vengeance, Justice Sigil, a Corrupt, and Combra Healer, Mask of Torment. This hand is exactly the kind of two power hand we were talking about where we really don't want to keep it. Uh, on the draw, it's kind of okay because you have that crest, but seeing as we don't have the necessary influence either, this is a really stale keep. I would say that it doesn't have enough of a plan early. We just want to redraw it. Um, and this will be significantly better. Not only do we have that double blue, which is critical for drawing through our stuff, but we also have access to some time and uh, apparently a little bit of justice, which is very, very helpful. Now all I need to do is get my hands on a Hailstorm, and we can get ourselves to be safe against aggro. We'll play the Crest of Coming first. Devoted Theurge is a good card against aggro, to be sure. The main problem with it here is that I need double time for it, and I'm not terribly comfy going for it since it is a four cost card that I will need to find other things to stabilize with. We're going to dig for Hailstorm, so we're going to try and bury anything that isn't Hailstorm for 
quite some time. Now, as far as my plays go, I want to play Seat of Wisdom here just because Crest of Cunning, while giving me access to other cards, uh, doesn't allow me to play Combra Healer on three, which is my backup plan against aggro. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Seat. And I think we will strategize and potentially bury something if we don't need to play anything. Okay, there's the Eight of the Huru. Uh, as I said, we generally want to put that on the bottom on the first turns, especially if we're seeing Oni Ronin on turn four. Okay, no play there. That's good. Assembly line means that we're probably going to be struggling for a Hailstorm pretty quick here. Now, I have two options. I can play the Combre Healer and get myself some board development. I might get Permafrosted, but it'd be a pretty decent way to play it out. Uh, if we play the Wisdom of the Elders, then we can draw and try and find Hailstorm. We'll take a lot more damage in the process, especially from any sort of Rally effect. I haven't seen Rally on the ladder in a while, so it might be safer to go for Wisdom, but I think here I just feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I think I do want to play the Wisdom. Uh, if we play the Combre Healer on the next turn, then we'll have a little bit more access and can potentially get a little bit more done. I didn't find the Hailstorm either way, so a bit rough, but... What you gonna do? <laughs> and there is the rally. Okay, he's going for it. All right, so he spent an awful lot on that rally. We want to really be able to stop him from doing that again. Let's go ahead and play the Justice Sigil here. Combrake Close Healer's gonna get thrown down. Listen. That'll heal us for three. I'm gonna seek power for that second Justice so I can harsh roll if I draw it. Black Sky Harbinger is gonna be the saving grace here. If we can get that card down, I think we're good to go. The main problem is that he can deal 9 with another rally, and he's got potentially a torch or something in here, which would be lethal, so uh, let's hope that he's not a rally deck. Alright, we see the Morning Star. Uh, I think here we just want to block that. It doesn't really seem like a good idea to let it through. Maybe we'll find something better in a second. There's the Harsh Rule. Play the Justice Sigil, play the Harsh Rule. Bit of a lucky save there, but we have Black Sky Harbinger for the next assembly line, so I think I'm pretty happy with that result. And there it is, assembly line. There's a Pyro Knight. That's actually kind of an issue. We do not have the ability to stop that. Uh, I will just play Black Sky Harbinger here. That'll knock five life back into our coffers, and then he'll probably up that Pyro Knight if he has the power for it. If not, he might be throwing some torches, something else. Yeah, we see a 7-6. That's pretty scary. And ouches. Much ouches. Okay, so what I want to do here is I have this corrupt. The big answer here is a torch, so it's I'm going to Temple Scrap. Right here. And I'm going to Temple Scrap it's again. Written right here. And then we're going to play the Crest of Wisdom to set up... Oh, we got a Hailstorm. That's not really the card that I need, but it is very good against this board. Uh, I think we could keep this, and it wouldn't be a bad idea if my opponent wants to play more uh, assembly lines, anything along those lines. So yeah, let's hold on to that. And we have this Corrupt here, so we should be good against pretty much anything except Permafrost. We'll just do this. And I'm glad there wasn't a Torch. Good, good times, good, good times. And there is a Spark Hatcher. Alright, so that is a card that I would really like to be able to deal with better, but we're going to play Martial Ironthorn. You've run and we're going far. to Crest of Cunning. And now we are digging through our deck for uh, Eight of the Guru, which is actually a useful card at this point, seeing as we're getting pretty close to actually having it be playable. Uh, this seems like a fine block. I can definitely get away with having a Grenadine. I don't want to take any damage here. And that's all the war cries, all of the shenanigans that Joy Boy can play on us. So we'll play a Wisdom of the Elders. Temple Scribe can block the 1-1 one -one or force the 1-1 one to get some sort of weapon it's so I can vanquish right it. Here. There's another vanquish. And now I just need a little bit more power. Sacrificing the Iron Thorn was a tricky play, but I think it was well worth it. Just block there, no problem. I have plenty of sweepers, I have plenty of answers, I think we're mostly happy about how this is going. Eight of the Huru seems like a pretty good card. Uh, let's go ahead and Hailstorm here so I take a little bit less damage. And we'll leave the Harsh Rule up for the next one. I would prefer not to take the Spark Catcher in the first place, but I'm not going to Harsh Rule a single 1-1. One -one. Not when I'm at 13 health. Wield the blade. Okay. No upgrade for the Pyro Knight. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we can Vanquish that or we can Harsh Rule. Let's just Harsh Rule to clear the board out. I have a second Harsh Rule available. And uh, if he wants to play some single cards that are threatening, I will have Vanquishes. 
Okay. This guy is sort of the big threat. If he plays three of these in a row, he can win. So we're going to vanquish that one. We see some sort of pause, which means he might have a torch. I would really prefer him not to have a torch, and I really need to get myself up to eight of the Huru so I can stabilize the board. But we do have Corrupted for the torch, so we're not going to take lethal from it. Brace yourself! All right, there's two. Martial Ironthorn is not the answer I'm looking for, but anything aimed at Martial Ironthorn will also probably... Yeah, I think we just harsh rule here. This ends now. This last card is still a torch. Um, if I play Martial Ironthorn, I can get torch to the face, which I don't think I love. Um, but I think I need this as a blocker. You've like, I want to have that corrupt up for the torch, but honestly, like, I think we're just uh, hoping and praying that he doesn't have both. Okay, Vadius Clanfather, not that big a deal. It is going to be able to get big the next turn, but that's okay because we have an out. Wisdom of the Elders is a really good top deck, but not the top deck I'm super looking for here. Mask of Torment, also not that useful here. I think we're just looking for anything that stabilizes, like Black Sky Harbinger. So he'll play a weapon on Vadius. And that'll force me to chump. Poor Ironthorn is getting thrown under the bus quite a bit today. But now we are in a position where we can just aid the Huru. And we found a Time Sigil, and we found a Temple Scribe. That's really useful. I'm going to vanquish Vadius since that's probably the biggest threat to my personal security at the moment. Holding the Corrupt would have also been fine, but uh, I'm a little worried about just having too many things happening at once. Alright, he's torching the face, and that's game. Managed to stabilize with the aid of the Huru, just had too much stuff on board, too many cards in hand, so that uh, that wraps that one up. And as you can see, we can beat the aggro with this version of the deck. We have a pretty good matchup against General Skycrag. That wasn't even a particularly good hand for us. I don't think it was a great hand for our opponent either, but he did have the rally and the assembly line combo, which is kind of nice. So yeah, like uh, overall, sort of a mid-range matchup, and on average, we do beat that deck. So looking pretty good. All right, here we are up against Robot Jellyfish. I've got Crest of Vengeance, Seat of Order, Seek Seek, and Temple Scribe. This hand is pretty good. With the two Seeks, I can get the double time I need to play Mask of Torment, Temple Scribe stuff. That's actually something I want to be doing. Two of the additions that uh, Ilya K made to this deck that I think were really, really good are Temple Scribe, which uh, he uses in place of Sanctuary Priest. I really like Sanctuary Priest because it's greedy as heck. But uh, the main thing about it is that Temple Scribe just gives you a lot more ability to draw into the power you need. So uh, we've found that that has just been a really, really good addition. Uh, and we'll go ahead and throw the Crest there and see how that goes. Uh, the other one that is really cool is Black Sky Harbinger. We've talked a little bit about how good that card is for stabilizing against aggro and really how useful it can be. Uh, here I'm just going to use the Crest and we're going to seek for the time that we need. Another Temple Scribe actually is pretty good, seeing as we have the Mask of Torment available, and our opponent is in Argenbor colors, which means we don't have to rely too heavily on Mask of Torment. Uh, or rather, we can rely heavily on Mask of Torment because my opponent's not going to have any Send attachment destruction. So we play a Seat of Order here, or a Time Sigil. I'd say a Time Sigil, and we'll seek for time here. And then I'll probably just play Seat of Order, Mask of Torment. Temple Scribes will ramp us two more, which will get us up to around eight, and then we can start playing very scary cards. The one thing we don't have here is double blue, which means we're going to be unable Send to use Tailstorm, a card that's really useful against this sort of early aggro style of Arch Court. Uh, I would really like to use Hailstorm, but we'll take our time on it. There's the Mask. Temple Scribe will be a follow-up. And once Temple Scribe is down, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Trust in your skills. Okay, Unseen Commando is definitely a big threat. And yep, there we go with the threes. This is a lot of damage all at once. Let's go ahead and just harsh roll this out. This ends now. And by playing our time, we have access to Temple Scribe, so we're in pretty good shape.
Now, I'd like to not see a tab rod here. Uh, sometimes this deck is very aggro and it doesn't run tab rod. Sometimes it's kind of mid range, and that's actually usually good for us because if it's kind of mid range, you'll see a tab rod, but that will be the only big threat about five, and we have four vanquishes, four harsh rolls, so we're not really too unhappy with that. It's more the mix of lots and lots of high end units and also the lack of the sabotage that's going to be causing us problems. Send a message. Seeing some. Uh, Potential connection issues, but it looks like they're coming through. Looks like we're fine. Okay, another harsh rule. Right I would dearly love to play that harsh rule, but I don't need it right now, so let's go ahead and play it's both Temple's right Rats. That ramps us off the mask. And we can play Combray Healer here, or I can wait on that and use Corrupt. Um, I would actually prefer to have Corrupt up here. I don't need the Combray Healer for anything, seeing as this is deadly. So we just have two things that we can play with, and if my opponent wants to use single target removal, uh, Corrupt will turn the tables on him. Easy block here. We have the Harsh Rule available, so we can play the Harsh Rule into a Combra Healer. Anything along those lines. Crest of Wisdom. A Crest of Cunning is power 12, but Combra Healer does not currently save us. So let's go ahead and play... I think what I want to do is play the Combray Healer as a Close defender. We'll allow him to invest like a blood letter onto the 4-3. That'll draw him a new card, but it'll also potentially be a power or something not useful for him. So he'll lose overall card quality uh, in attacking with the Auric Interrogator, if he puts a blood letter on it at all. We have the Corrupt, so if he chooses to throw a Slay, we can kill the Auric Interrogator immediately. We won't lose anything, and we won't have to Harsh Roll. But the main thing here is whether or not I'm going to get to cast Aid of the Huru, and that's guaranteed in two turns, so as long as we're careful. Okay, yeah, 7-4 in the air is kind of an issue, so let's go ahead and block there. And we'll just throw our Harsh Roll. He does take one damage, but he draws the card, which is pretty useful for him. I could have attacked for two damage there. Um, that's not going to matter in the long run, but it is generally correct to attack for the damage when you have it. Justice Sigil here. I don't need a Justice Sigil. I need more gas, so we'll go ahead and put that away. Let's see your Vanquish instead of my Aid of the Guru out of your hand. Trust in your Unseen skills. Commando is a pretty good one. That was a very adept sabotage. I've been playing this deck a lot on the ladder, and there's been a lot of uh, Channel the Tempest Mask Bruce out there, so uh, a lot of people who are uh, playing a little bit more savvy, but let's just go ahead and cast that aid. And there's our new Tomorrow, which will prevent us from having hands like this off of Aid of the Huru from now on. Another Aid of the Huru. I am absolutely into it. Send a message. Halt! Now it's probably better to Aid of the Huru twice than to New Tomorrow here. <sighs> probably. Yeah, I think it's it's absolutely better to just stabilize and deal some damage. Uh, I would really like to play New Tomorrow, but I don't have to this turn, so I'm not gonna. Touch of the Umbran is great here. I can use that to steal the 4-5, and that'll give us a very, very big air force that we can play with. It also gives us something to block with in a second. All right, that's enough for Robot Jellyfish. 2-8 of the Hurus is all you need. Uh, I'm very happy about holding that corrupt for the sabotage. <laughs> all right, here's one against Snoop. And uh, the opener, not too bad. We have access to Great Parliament and Theers, both which are okay cards. Strategize is going to allow us to put Aid of the Huru on the bottom and give us a couple new cards. So this looks like a reasonable hand to start. We do need a little bit more early game anything. So we want to play things like Combra Healer, things like Hailstorm. Uh, my opponent is in Praxis, so that is a setup that is generally going to be fine for us. We're going to strategize away Aid of the Huru. We have plenty of cards to play for the next couple of turns that are really going to help out. And Mask of Torment means that I probably don't play Combra Healer until turn 5 or so. Especially since this seems pretty slow. Okay, now we're in 3 colors. 
red, yellow, and green. This could be any number of things. I'm going to need double green and I'm going to need shadow. Let's grab the shadow first since that's going to set up Mask of Torment. So once I have Mask of Torment down, I have a lot of ways to gain extra power and get myself towards a very good Great Parliament, which is going to be very helpful on the uh, overall trek upwards. We have Black Sky Harbinger, which I can play next turn if I so choose. Double Combre Healer could be a good follow-up to that. I still haven't seen my opponent play anything, so we're going to take a look and see what he's got. Okay, that's a pretty scary card. Let's go ahead and play Black Sky Harbinger now. And then we will beef it up with Combre Healer, depending on whether or not we're going to see the ever-so-scary Predatory Carnosaur. We could see Purify here, we could see Torch, we could see all manner of interesting cards. Ah, a Sandglass Juggernaut. Not a card that we're too Close worried about. Uh, definitely part of a more, like, aggro style. So let's go ahead and Close get as much health on this, this Black Sky Harbinger as humanly possible. That'll ramp us even more. We're getting pretty close to a really cool Great Parliament. Play a Crest. I've got the Seat of Progress available, which is nice. Find the way gets us more power, but I don't need more power at this point. I think I need actual gas. Okay, this guy's gonna attack for six. Honestly, like, with a, the potential for a Carnosaur, I think I'm just gonna block. I don't want to lose my Black Sky Harbinger. I just want to shovel up any sort of threats with it. Okay, part of the Vault takes out something. Devoted Fear gets us up another 2 power. And now I've got a 411 and a 55 available. Neither of which are looking particularly strong for blocking here. I can kill this Heart of the Vault. I think I like that route. If he wants to kill the Black Sky Harbinger, he's got to give me two extra power to do it. And if he does that, then my Parliament's crazy. Whoa! Whoa there! Alright, double damage lifesteal is pretty cool. Uh, that's not gonna help him that much, though, because he's still dead. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, that was enough to kill my Black Sky Harbinger, and the Sandglass Juggernaut is a problem. It's not that much of a problem. Let's Crest of Wisdom here. Crest of Cunning, not a card I'm particularly looking for. I gain up to six. Parliament now deals four owls, which is a ton of chump blockers for the moment. So I think we'll do that. And then we'll seek out some justice. Really interesting deck here. Uh, I do like Righteous Fury on Titans. I don't know if this is going to be that effective for him. Alright, I've got a 6-6 six, six to block the Sandstorm Titan. I have a 6-1 here that's just being a 6-1. I think we chump block that so we don't take 12. Now, Theurge is not that great a card in the mid-range, but it is Let's pretty dance. strong if you just want to immediately get yourself up to it's the necessary right power here. to play Mask of Torment, guys. Oh, and there's a Black Sky Harbinger to help out, too, if I want it. I don't think he actually adds anything to this particular setup, so let's just, uh, be your jump twice, play our justice, and, uh, be good. I can play my Tormentor next turn. I still don't have anything to deal with this Sandblast Juggernaut. I need a Harsh Ruler of Vanquish for that, so it's just gonna keep gaining life. So my opponent's at 72. That's gonna be a hard target to solve. Eight of the Huru at least stuns the Juggernaut, which I think is probably worthwhile at this point. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm too worried about the stand together. It does mean that his stuff is a little bit bigger, which is a little bit scarier, but uh, since we're popping the Aegis, that actually means that we'll be able to do some bad things to the Juggernaut later on. I'm going to play the Mask of Torment here because it's great, and a Devoted Theurge will give us even more health to play with and also pump up our power a little bit so we can continue to Devoted Theurge away. At this point, big Devoted Theurges are one of my saving graces. 
You've run far. Okay, Marshall Ironthorn is a card that needs to die. I don't think there's really any any argument about that. Like the bigger it is, the worse my deck gets, and him ulting my Marshall Ironthorn would be him ulting here would be pretty crazy. Okay. So let's let's do the simple thing. We're gonna gain six. Gain another six. Or gain another. Or rather gain one three times. And we're gonna harsh roll. Can't stand together here. So I can clear the board. And now I'm at 30 power with the tormentors available. All this of the fun stuff. Do the trick. Trailmaker gets him a little bit of extra influence. He's potentially got more stuff to play here, but I think we're gonna be okay. Like both Righteous Fury guys are gone. Sandglass Juggernaut was the big deal because that was the hard card to kill. Doesn't seem to have a Heart of the Vault on top or anything crazy. So what's up, Snoop? What are we doing? Thinking real hard. <laughs> okay, so... Praxis does just generally run out of stuff, is the main thing. Like, uh, Heart of the Vault makes it pretty hard for it to run out of stuff at a regular interval, but with our extra, like, Eight of the Hurus, with our um, Mask of Torments, I think we're going to be okay. And both of us are at a high enough life total that I'm not sure that Praxis can make up the difference. If he manages to get another big board out, and I don't find a Sweeper, a Harsh Roll, any of the Huru, anything along those lines in the next couple of turns, then this will get a little bit weird. Okay. Uh-oh. That might be my client, then. Oh, we'll close real quick and reload. Alright, yeah, it was our client. Okay, so, Black Sky Harbinger here. Go ahead and follow that up with a Mask of Torment Tormentor. Swing for eight. Get ourselves eight damage in. And, uh, yeah, we can Hailstorm here if we want to kill the Whirling Duo. I don't think it's necessary. I found a Vanquish, which is a very, very good thing. Um, if he Righteous Furies the Whirling Duo, then he kills my Black Sky Harbinger, and that's the only thing that I care about. Double Torch gets him three life. I don't think that's a particularly big deal. We'll play a second Tormentor. I am free. <laughs> now I'm hitting him for 16 apiece every turn. Seek Power is not a card I need, but Hailstorm is. Now if he wants to harsh roll this, I'll have a bunch of Spitelings. Those are cheap blockers that'll actually slowly kill him. Not over the course of time that I really want to, him to die, but eh, the more we can do. Go ahead and play this seat, and yeah, we're just uh, we're on a nice slow road to victory. 51 versus 35, Crest of Cunning is available. If I can get a hold of the um, Touch of the Umbrin or another Eight of the Huru, either of those cards will definitely win us the game. Keep bonking on him with the Tormentors. This is going to take a little while. <laughs> Seek power, throwing things together. Crest of Cunning for me, so I'm just drawing power, but that's okay. Temple Scribe seems like a fine card. Gets me both ramp and another card. And we have enough power that we don't care about not having that set up, so good, good stuff. All right, we got, uh, took a little break and came back. I'm getting a little sick right now, but I think we're about ready to finish off the whole setup. Uh, we're currently at 86 points, so this should be the last game for Master. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it done. Crest, seat, crest. Seems good. Okay, so <clears throat> as far as openers go, I've got enough stuff going on with the influence that I'm feeling pretty happy about it. The two crests give us a little bit of search, so this, as far as opening hands go, is pretty strong. We have the Hailstorm to prevent aggro, we have draw to make sure that we get ahead against the control decks, and uh, yeah, like, we can actually get ourselves a pretty decent move. Um, 
A Primal Sigil doesn't help me too much here, but I do need Undepleted Power, so we're definitely happy to grab that since it both uh, gives us an Undepleted Power Source on time, and it also allows us to play Undepleted Sources on other turns. So I'm going to play the Crest of Wisdom here, since that's going to do similar things to the Strategize, sort through my deck, try and find that Mask of Torment. Um, and if we can find any type of ramp, we'll be a lot happier. Um, okay, so my opponent is playing Elysian stuff. That's generally big stuff. If we can double Hailstorm, we will usually clear everything on his board. So having these double Hailstorms is pretty nice. Strategize is also a good card to play. I'm going to go ahead and end my turn here in case there's a counterspell, some sort of backlash. Okay, we see a Secret Pages, so I'm going to go ahead and Wisdom in response. And we'll just see what we got, take a look at it. Okay, Crest of Vengeance gives me the ability to cast Harsh Rule. And hey, we're in Shadow, so it might be the Mirror. Or rather, it will be a Mirror of Sorts. We're going to be up against another Mask of Torment deck. This is, I think, the Manu S version. Um, we have a pretty decent matchup against this one. It is... This version focuses on Channel the Tempest as its major way of getting across uh, for damage. So if we can out-heal it, we're going to be just fine. And if we can find Corrupt, we can win outright just off of that card. So, and nothing here looks great. I think we're just going to go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, we should be pretty good. It's written um, right yeah, here. so this this is a lot more inflexible. This this particular list can it's definitely right get here. some pretty sweet plays. And ooh, man, he actually managed to get the mask and play into it. So he's going to be doing a little bit better than me for the next couple of turns. But I'll be able to play Iron Thorn, get some ramp going. The main problem here is that I'm facing down some channels pretty early. So we'll see what happens. All right, Black Sky Harbinger is a harsh roll, I would say, definitely. I'd love to play Iron Thorn here, but I don't need to. I'm just going to throw this down, yes, and we can Hailstorm next turn after a Martial Iron Thorn, so should be pretty good there. Seek Power there gets him the blue influence he needs to play out Channel, although he's actually looking for green, so I guess this is uh, an Ilya K version or something similar to the actual mirror. You've run That's probably good for us. We have our Iron Thorns here, so we're actually getting pretty close to the ramp we need. We're fairly close to 8 of the Huru, and Devoted Theurge gives us a little bit of extra gas, so that'll put us up to 12 for 8 of the Huru. Um, I think that we win most matchups against other versions of this list. Ours is just like a little better tuned, or like, at feet, least it has Wanderer. a better matchup against most slow control lists because we're fairly greedy people. So we're going to go ahead and see how that goes. But I am now at 8 of the Huru power. So let's see if he's got his. This ends now. Okay, he throws a harsh rule just to counter my Theurge. And I get to 8 of the Huru here for free. Found another Mask of Torment, which is an important piece of the puzzle. And playing Crest of Wisdom here gets a, say, a Great Parliament. That's a really, really good card. Um, we'll be forcing him to Harsh Rule as much as possible, and once he runs out of Harsh Rules or runs out of any sort of answers, then we can just throw that Great Parliament down and have ourselves a blast. Double Hailstorm means that he's probably struggling a little bit to find his own Eight of the Huru. I'm going to throw the second Mask, since that allows us to ramp with Black Sky, and right now getting the most power is actually the most important thing. We're going to play the Wisdom here. And Find the Way is not a card I particularly need. We'll seek power, see what's left in the deck. Looks like five sigils, so we will be able to play Find the Way on following turns. Parliament is up to four owls. I'd like it to be up to a few more, um, just because we're kind of facing down like a pretty weird board. But uh, we, can, we can make this work. So my life gain will get me up to closer to 20, I'd say. I think harsh rule here seems like the right call. The question we want to ask ourselves is whether or not we want to play harsh rule into great parliament. Um, and if I want to attack and allow him to get 14. I think I'm going to crest. Another Mask of Torment seems fine. Uh, so yeah, if I attack here, I get close to 20, which is pretty critical. He gets up to 14, which I don't think helps him all that much. I think we'll attack. That way we only have to spend a Hailstorm instead of a Harsh Rule. And since we're at 20, we get 5 Owls. So that'll be a Harsh Rule or Bust for him. Or an 8 of the Huru or Bust, either way. Okay. This ends now! That's Harsh Rule 1. Okay, or rather Harsh Rule 3. On your feet, wanderer. Yeah, we've seen two Harsh Rules and a double Hailstorm. 
Okay, he's got his own 4-4. I'd actually like to kill that. Um, we know exactly what that card does. It ramps him to 20, which is where he wants to be. So I'm just going to play my Mask of Torment. I'm going to find a way and get some power out of my deck. And we're going to play that power, and then next turn we're going to play our Tormentors. Uh, you can delay on the Tormentors for pretty much as long as possible against most control decks. As long as you have the life total to play with it. Uh, the Tormentor is your finisher, but it's definitely like a card that you want to be fairly careful with when you're playing it. Okay, double Hailstorm here will clear out this Theurge. And then we'll both be playing Tormentors, it looks like. That's going to be a little bit tricky. So I've answered all of his Mask of Torment ramps. The question is, what has he found? It's written Temple right Scribe's here. a good card for him. I I would definitely like to have better card draw myself. He's got a Seek, so he's up to 19. But it looks like he hasn't found everything he needs yet. Crest of Cunning, I gotta find something cool. New Tomorrow I think is probably good enough. Uh, it is not the card I want to win the game, but it's gonna be pretty close. Cool. So we'll play our first Tormentor, and then we'll move on to our second one at a later date. Okay, there's one. Is he playing a defensive Tormentor? No, he doesn't have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and play New Tomorrow. We must That'll get all of the power out of our deck and give us much better draws for the preceding setup. We will be able to cast Eight of the Hoover more often, and we will just have like our deck pretty well sorted and ready to go against his. Eight of the Huru on top. I think we want to leave that on top. It's the best card. Wee. <laughs> okay. So attack for eight here. Currently sitting on a 34 power. Uh, let's hold the time sigil just to sort of freak him out if we can. Wisdom of the Elders is fine. And at this point, I'm swinging for 16 with two Tormentors and stunning everything else. Okay, we have one Slay out there, and on there's feet, a Devoted Theater. A card that I currently can't kill, and probably don't need to at this point. I have more Masks of Torment, I have my Eight of the Huru. We have our Strategize and our Harsh Rule and our Corrupt. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Mask of Torment here. And we're gonna hold up Corrupt, so attack for eight. And just leave that Corrupt for whatever he was planning on doing. Seed of Wisdom looks fine. Um, lots of life gain means lots of extra power. And Harsh Rule means that the board is clear again, and the Spitelings are slowly going to start to overwhelm him. So we have some time here. We get to, I guess we get to Eight of the Huru again. Let's go ahead and do that. That gets us all of the power we need. I think we're winning in style at this point. And another Tormentor means that we are far outreaded. Attack for eight. Same as before, hold up the Corrupt. This time we'll do the smart thing and actually seek power, but uh, looks like there's nothing left in the deck, so. Time Sigil. Wow. All four harsh rolls. Well, there you go. At this point, I have three Spitelings a turn for my Tormentors. And we're going to steal his Tormentor as well. This is the other reason why our deck is very well favored in the, mirror, mirror, in the mirror, because we have this. So I've got four Tormentors to his zero. Um, that's feeling pretty good. I should have used my uh, Wisdom of the Elders here. I don't know why I didn't. We could have dug for other stuff. I just wanted to steal his Tormentor and hit him with it. All right. Anyways, let's let's actually do the right thing and use all of our card draw and get everything going. Okay, vanquish, strategize, that's all good. Okay, so yeah, uh, temple scribe here to push seems pretty good. I've got eight damage here plus six. If I can find a little right bit here. more, uh, the last mask of torment would win the game. It's written right Assuming here. I can find it fast. It's written temple scribes right here. aren't quite gonna do it, but they are a cool ramp. <laughs> that's it's four temple scribes right in a row we're, we're the bookish type right now we've got hailstorm that's not a card that I need but noted and I don't need seek powers anymore so we're going to put those on the bottom strategize again see if we can find that mask 
I still need power for that to happen, so it doesn't look like it's going to happen this turn. That's a bummer. Uh, we'll just go ahead and punt a vanquish. Attack with everything. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, actually, with the hailstorm, that's good. I was not thinking about those spitelings, but that should be good enough. So we'll hailstorm. All the spitelings will deal their damage, and that should be master. I think we got it. Exact. And, oh, oh. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's see here. Eh, eh, yep, there we go. So yeah, uh, as far as this deck goes, I feel like it's got a relatively positive win rate. I am enjoying playing it a lot in the upper echelons. We're going to be playing with it a little bit more in Master and playing with some tweaks of it over the upcoming weeks. But uh, just wanted to show it off and hope you guys enjoyed the list. Uh, I'll be coming at you with some other interesting lists soon. And of course, we'll keep uploading sealed videos, all of that other stuff. Tune in for that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, see you next time. Have a good one.